Today we begin an eight-part series on the best of the situation comedies of the 1960s. Our guest host is Barbara Eden, who, as you probably remember, starred in one of those series, I Dream of Jeannie. She's currently at the Westbury Music Fair on Long Island, where she's starring in Woman of the Year. Barbara starts our series today with a look back at the antics of four young men called the Monkeys. <laughs> The 60s, a decade of turmoil, a decade of war, a decade of peace and love. It was a time of social and political upheaval that touched all. Our music evolved too, revolutionized in part by the British invasion that found its way to America. Hey, hey, with a monkey, and people say we monkey around. Four fun-loving zany musicians clowning around singing songs. NBC hoped the idea would strike a familiar chord, and it was fairly obvious when the Monkees went on the air in September 1966 that the show was inspired by the Beatles' popular movies. The, uh, the Monkees series uh, was to Hard Day's Night uh, as your average uh, burglar is to a Beverly Hills silverware set. It was a straight rip-off. Yes, we took. We're not ashamed. <laughs> I have an appointment with a personnel director. Course, Folk singer Peter Tork was one of 500 actors and musicians who answered a casting call for a new TV show that would, in effect, create an American version of the Beatles. Be Tork made it, as did former child actor Mickey Dolenz, known earlier as TV Circus Boy. So did English singer Davy Jones, following his screen test. What do you want me to do? Oh, uh, man, it's one of your little quick things. <laughs> hey, Davey, you want to know something? Honestly, hold on for a second. What? I really think you should have been a jockey. <laughs> yeah. Aspiring country singer Mike Nesmith was also cast following his screen test. Why do you do this kind of business? What's that? Playing the music. Well, I mean, you know, get why do they call that a light? I don't know. That's just where it's at. Well, how'd you get to it? How long ago? About two years. You just came to it two years ago? Mm -hmm. what, what before then? I was a failure. Hey, give me a G. <laughs> their musical experience was limited. Then there was even talk that they might not be doing their own singing. When we were shooting this sequence, we played together for the first time. We actually got the instruments cranked up. Everybody says the monkeys couldn't sing and they could sing. Basically, of course, Mickey uh, Dolan's took lead on I'm a Believer, and Davy Jones uh, sang lead on I Want to Be Free, and um, Peter Tork uh, did some background sounds. Uh, but the Monkees did a lot of their own work. They were very melodic. I took a chance with the first song I was very nervous about, Last Train to Clarksville. Take the last train to Clarksville and I'll meet you that song, along with other hits, earned more than five gold albums for the group. It helped make the show a huge success, and it's still rerunning today. It was a forerunner of the whole notion of the kind of MTV thing that's happening, the fast gag, the quick move, the wipe, the dissolve, all the old silent film techniques. This newfound fame, however, was at times overwhelming. My recognition factor went up to like Walter Cronkite level. It was just amazing. And I walked down the streets and I was driving home from uh, work and uh, had um, had finished, I don't know, a fourth or fifth show, something like that. And I'm driving home from work and suddenly this girl throws herself across the hood of my car and begins to scream. Monkeys! When the recognition causes a type of abnormal behavior, that's, I mean, when somebody walks up to you on the street and stands there looking at you crying and screaming, this is, this is abnormal behavior. I don't care who you are. The group broke up in 1968 after two seasons and a series of cross-country concerts. Today, Davy Jones is back in England breeding horses and still has a music act. Peter Tork is in New York with his own band. Mike Nesmith runs a successful music video company. And Mickey Dolenz continues to act and direct. It was rare to its time. And in its uniqueness, and the thing is that the people who are now uh, middle management types uh, grew up on that show, and it stood for something that everybody was, uh, everybody liked a lot and held very dear. So you better get ready. The man coming to your town. Coming up next time, Agent 86, Don Adams, and the spice booth of the decade, Get Smart. With 60 sitcoms, I'm Barbara Eaton.